Apaceae, the parsley or carrot family. These guys have worldwide distribution, but they're mostly temperate. You don't find a lot of them in the tropics. They have sort of a sister family, the Aralaceae, that you see more in tropical areas. Uh, they have interesting hollow stems with uh, canals that uh, contain resins in them. The leaves are alternate, alternate and often uh, deeply dissected. So uh, they're pinnate and then multiply pinnate sometimes. The inflorescence is called an umbel, and usually it's an umbel of umbel. The fruit is a droop or a schizocarp, and uh, lots of economically important uh, uh, members. Carrot, celery, caraway, cilantro, parsley, dill, cumin, fennel, uh, parsnip. The characteristics, um, there's uh, aromatic hollow stems and uh, this inflorescence. Uh, you can see it better on the picture on the right. Um, all the flowers uh, branching from a, a single spot and then a second set of, uh, of flowers branching from the single spot. So that's what you call an umbel of umbels. Often have a taproot, which uh, think of carrot. The um, uh, family is in the order Apiales, <coughs> with uh, a lot of fuss over how many genera and how many species. Uh, in seems to be that uh, general consensus is uh, about 450 species and about uh, 450 genera and about 4,000 species. Uh, because it's so distinctive, the umbel of umbels, it was one of the very first families to be recognized as a distinct group um, back in the late 1500s of all times. It's up by an asteroid group of the, on our plant evolutionary tree. Notable species, celery, caraway, fennel, coriander, which is also cilantro, uh, parsley, anise, sweet sicily, cumin, <coughs> so a lot of seasonings, um, which is uh, part of the uh, resins that are in these plants. And uh, then additionally, uh, carrot, which is also uh, Queen Anne's lace, uh, wild parsnip, which is also edible parsnip, and then three really nasty players, uh, uh, well, four really, wild parsnip, cow parsnip, hemlock, and water hemlock. Uh, interesting uh, relationship is um, with uh, black swallowtail butterflies, uh, the only thing that their um, uh, larvae, their caterpillars, uh, will consume is are uh, members of the APACA. So historically, uh, we have uh, quite a few uh, native um, members of this um, family, and uh, but today, pretty much, they uh, depend on uh, people's gardens having um, dill and coriander and uh, the uh, garden herbs in them. So if you see a big old caterpillar that uh, indeed, I mean, these things are a couple inches long <coughs> when they're mature. They can be kind of intimidating looking, but uh, think of this butterfly when, uh, when you don't kill the caterpillar. And coriander and cilantro, coriandrum sativum, uh, native to uh, Eurasia, North Africa, uh, cultivated in ancient Greece, and even mentioned in the uh, Christian Bible. Um, in the United States, the leaves are called cilantro, and the seeds are called coriander. Uh, it's very common in uh, Southeast Asian, Middle Eastern, Chinese, Scandinavian, and Mexican cuisines in uh, differing amounts. In some cases, uh, just the powdered seeds. In other cases, a uh, significant amount of the leaves or the leaves just as a garnish. Um, it's in uh, garam masala, which is a, a very common Indian uh, spice mix. And uh, the roots are used in uh, Thai dishes and curries. There you can see the leaves and uh, some of the seeds. Carrots, Dalcus carota, uh, native to Europe and Southwest Asia, probably uh, Iran, Afghanistan area. Uh, Queen Anne's lace, which is very common uh, here. Uh, it was on the first picture um, with the butterfly on it in the very first slide. Big white um, flower, a little purple flower in the middle, um, is um, uh, this very same plant that uh, was through selective breeding uh, to reduce bitterness. Uh, we now have uh, a huge range of uh, colors and sizes of carrots. And um, this is, was started a long time ago. By the 1100s, uh, there were descriptions of different colors of carrots available in uh, Arab areas. Introduced to Europe in the 1600s. Uh, interestingly, there's several places around the world that have carrot festivals and uh, carrot celebrations for whatever reason. Coltville, California, which is um, out in the desert, uh, southeast uh, California, calls itself the carrot capital of the world, and they have a festival every year. We've already missed it this year. It was in early February. Um, and here you can see some individuals uh, 
dressed up to uh, enjoy the um, festival with apparently carrot uh, outfits on. There is a link at the end of this uh, presentation with uh, several other carrot um, museums and uh, festivals uh, that you can attend. Uh, the car in the middle there is uh, from similar in uh, France someplace. Uh, wild parsnip, which is the same as uh, the parsnips that we eat. Uh, it's a very popular root vegetable in Europe, um, places that have short growing seasons. Uh, it's sometimes made into wine. It's roasted, it's fried, it's used in stews. It's very rich in vitamins. The problem with it is you have to be careful because um, if you get the sap on your skin and then the skin is exposed to light, um, you get blisters. And they are genuine burns. It's not a dermatitis. Um, this, uh, if you want to see some really gory pictures, look up wild parsnip burns uh, in the internet. Uh, this was sort of a mild one I decided to put on here. And uh, I have a link to uh, a Wisconsin DNR page on the last uh, page also that uh, talks about people sometimes, you know, weed whipping this stuff down in their ditches with shorts on and getting uh, uh, bits all over their skin uh, to great uh, regret. And also um, a lot of people that uh, think it's poison ivy and it's actually um, this wild parsnip. It's extremely common in central Iowa. Uh, wet places, wet ditches, you'll see these big yellow plants. They look like a big dill plant. Um, they're easily three, four foot tall. They have a very ribbed skin, uh, stem. Uh, the stem will make you think of celery and uh, the classic umble of umbles um, in fluorescence. So watch your step if you're near um, a big yellow uh, part, um, APACA member. And even worse is uh, water hemlock, sometimes called spotted water hemlock, Secuta maculata, considered uh, the, to be the most toxic plant in North America. And um, often uh, can, as, uh, livestock will get into it, and uh, they say just uh, a couple pieces of the in, couple inches of the root is enough to kill a cow. Another reason it's called cow bane. Uh, the stems are hollow with a purple with a swelling at the bottom, and um, in the the glands at that bottom stem um, is uh, exceptionally poisonous sap. And the poison is um, due to a, a toxin called cicutoxin and uh, it causes permanent neurological damage, including retrograde amnesia, and meaning that you can't remember what you knew yesterday. So another uh, plant to walk, watch out for, a very large plant. If you see a, a big white uh, member of the APACA, Embles of Umbles, um, don't eat it. Similarly is a non-native um, member of the APACA that's been introduced and is now very common, uh, grows um, uh, routinely in uh, parks and wet places in Des Moines is uh, poison hemlock. This is the same hemlock that uh, Socrates was uh, forced to drink when he was convicted of impiety uh, back um, before the current era. Um, the uh, Just a few leaves is enough to um, uh, kill a human. It works by uh, paralyzing your respiratory muscles, so you uh, just slowly quit breathing. It um, uh, Paradoxically, is uh, sold in by uh, different homeopathic and herbal companies. You can get your uh, purified Conium maculatum, same exact uh, genus and species. It's also in a lot of uh, different um, uh, herbal um, mixes, and uh, it just shows you how inauthentic those are. That uh, people haven't been dying from the fact that they're consuming what obviously isn't Conium maculatum, or they would die. Uh, Iowa natives. The Zizia aurea, and then there's another one, Zizia eptera, Golden Alexander and Hartleaf Alexander. Uh, these pictures are Golden Alexander. Um, lovely plant, uh, use, good use for um, native landscaping. Takes a little water, but it'll also take some drought. And uh, close up of uh, one of the umbels shows, shows you just how tiny those little flowers are. Um, they do have little stamens protruding from them. And an interesting one, kind of a specimen plant, is uh, called Rattlesnake Master, Eryngium yuccifolium. Here you can see the umbel of umbels. Uh, these flowers are complete. Uh, they don't open up or do anything more. But uh, in total, they can produce a kind of interesting looking plant. Uh, notice it's called yuccifolium because the leaves look a lot like a yucca. Before it blooms, um, it looks like a yucca. But once it does bloom, it doesn't look anything at all like one. Toxicity, yes, extremely. Uh, I've already covered water hemlock, uh, probably the most poisonous plant in the U.S., in North America. 
Uh, water pars uh, wild parsnip, which will cause sap, and which the combination of sap and sun will cause burns. And there are some other uh, members of this family, um, even celery. Uh, people that work in celery fields harvesting um, sometimes have that reaction. And then uh, poison hemlock is an introduced uh, species that's uh, extremely poisonous. Here's some references. Like as I mentioned, if you want to know about the carrot museums and festivals, you can check this link. Or the Hopeville, California Chamber of Commerce has some interesting stuff. Uh, there's a list of poisonous plants in the APACA um, that someone put quite a bit of time into. And uh, I strongly recommend looking at this uh, Wisconsin uh, article where they have uh, photographs and a lot of information on people that uh, have gotten into uh, wild parsnip. That concludes the APACA.